Hi, this is David Powers from the iOS XR team, and today we'll be talking about uh, user privileges on iOS XR box, um, specifically about root system and Cisco support task groups, and show you some issues seen. A uh, very common issue that we have that we see with customers is that um, often when uh, they issue a command like show BGP trays, show OSPF trays. The command says it's not authorized. To see what kind of privileges you need to run this command, you would do the same command and you could do the describe command. But unfortunately describe command takes Cisco support privileges as well as the show BGP trace command uh, and show OSPF trace. So most trace commands, um, traces are uh, debugs that run constantly on iOS XR platform and they can be very valuable to troubleshooting problems like if your OSPF neighbor were to flap you would probably want to go in and grab the show OSPF trace. But if you don't have Cisco support privileges you're not able to do that. So how do you go about giving Cisco support privileges to a user? So the first thing that we want to do is see who we're logged in as. So to do that we would use the command show user and that'll show me that I'm currently logged into this box as the user lab. So to see how I was authenticated by a, the for the user lab I would do show user authentication method. And it says I, I was authenticated via the local uh, local authentication as opposed to TACX or RADIUS. So to see this, I'm going to go to my admin mode. And I'm going to look at my show run from admin mode. And I'm going to see that uh, I, I have a username lab and it has a password configured and it has group root system. So the common misconception is, is that if you have... Uh, if you have have are in the user group root system that you are uh, a super user of an iOS XR platform when in reality um, root system uh, allows you to do many commands but commands such as um, restarting processes or following processes and often uh, commands required to troubleshoot various problems need Cisco support as well so if I was to do local authentication Simply uh, it, uh, to allow this, I would just go in under username. And I configure group Cisco support. And I commit it. So if I do a show user group command this tells me all of the um, all of the user groups that I'm the user lab which I'm logged in as is associated with it. and you can see um, it's only root system so what I have to do even though I made that configuration change that configuration change does not grant me the rights until I log out and log back into the system so I'm going to do that now And I'm going to log in as lab. And I do show user group again. And now you can see I have Cisco support privileges. So now if I do, um, if I do show OSPF, trace I'm allowed to run the command again to dis to see what um, rights you need to run a command you use the command describe so if I do describe show OSPF trace it tells me 
that to run this command the user needs all of the following task IDs OSPF read and Cisco support read so the reason why I was not able to issue the command show OSPF trace was that I did not have show uh, uh, Cisco support read privileges now to see exactly what privileges you have you use the command show user tasks and this shows me that now that I've reconfigured my local user ID I have Cisco support read write and execute privileges so stay tuned for the next time when we'll talk about how you do the same type of thing with radius and tacx authentication methods <laughs>